Alrighty, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to run D&D um, 5th edition combat uh, using Roll20, um, how to put a map down again, I'll go over that once again, how to put down monsters and find their stat blocks and put it on their tokens so that you can quickly just click and roll for them. Um, how to use the GM layer so that you can hide monsters in certain areas. Um, and as well, I'll just run through a mock combat with some mock characters that I've created really quickly. Um, show you how to run attacks and health um, and how to do maybe some spells. And then we'll see what happens from there. So the first thing we need to do is get a map. I have done that already. Um, I have found this one here that would serve me good for a nice little um, ambush encounter when the characters are traveling along the road and they encounter some monsters. Classic, classic stuff. So I have it. I got the file. I have it on my desktop. I'm just going to click and drag it over to upload it. Sweet. So there it is. It's not the right shape for the hexes that uh, for the the grid that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and do my resizing. So first, I'm going to put it on the correct layer. I'm going to put it on the map layer, um, and then I'm going to go to that layer and do some fiddling around. So let's get it as close as we can to the same size. Let's see if we zoom in a bit. That's pretty close. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. So. I'm going to change the grid on this page. So I have my goblin ambush page. I'm going to change the settings to make the grid black and really opaque for us. And that way we can see it. OK, there we go. That's a bit better. So from what I can see is that the squares are fairly cl close. Let's put it up about here. Now let's do our alignment. Not chaotic good or lawful neutral, the map alignment. I'm going to right click, go to advanced, and go align to grid. Now it wants you to select a 3x3 three three grid on the map background you're using. So you have to zoom in as close as you can and place the the like movement mouse pointer on the cross of where two of them meet. And then there's one, there's a 2x2, two two, and uh oh, I need to restart. Cancel. I'm going to do a 3x3. Three Oops, let's try again. OK, let's start here. So there's one, two by two, three by three, as close as we can to getting them all. And align to grid. Cool, pretty close. Now I'm going to press down my Alt key and click and drag the map so it's right on there. And let go of both. There we go. Now let's get off of this layer before I mess something up. And now we are all aligned. Um, if you want to get rid of these white boxes as well, like on the outside, I find it's nice to have them just in case. I'm just going to center this a bit because it's going to bother me. It's good to have extra just in case people decide to go off the map and that way you don't have to go into the settings in the middle of a fight. It kind of just speed things up. Just have a little bit of extra. If you want to make it less jarring and less like bright white, you can go into your page settings and change the background color to, I'm just going to make it a soft a dark green. Cool. So we have our map. We're ready to go. Now um, let's deal with where the monsters are going to be. I'm going to assume that the characters are coming from this direction. So that's where they're going to be placed on the map. So I'm going to say that up here on this little ledge is going to be some creatures and maybe um, behind this rock, perhaps. So now that we have our map down, we're all aligned. Let's get some monsters. So you can use, well, let me adjust the map a bit. You can use, if you want, the tokens that are for free. Uh, there's quite a few. I know that they just put out some free ones recently. Let's find some, do I have subscription sets? Humanoid monsters. OK, let's use a. Goblin Archer. Put him down. 
Those are just so small. Okay, I'm not going to use those. I'm going to make my own. Let's find some D&D 5e goblin. All right, here we go. Let's use this, this fella right here. So let's save that image onto the desktop. Normally, you can get these ones as assets, but you can also make them um, on your own using um, token stamp too. So let's put them there. And a lot of the adventures, if you do end up picking them up, they will have everything set up like this for you. This is just if you want to do it on your own, you want it your own way, then you can do it this way. Goblin, there, so I have my goblin token. Let's go back to our battle map and upload them. All right, that's too big. So click and drag to make it smaller. There we go, we have one, okay. So we don't want, when I shift the players over, using this when i use when i move the player banner to this one i don't want them to see this guy this goblin hanging out here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to shift him or her i don't know if it's a boy or a girl um i'm going to shift them to the gm layer so this way i can't click it and they can't see that person there if i switch myself okay i'm going to move the players over here just like that. I'm gonna pretend I'm a player. And if you want, if you want to test things out for yourself too as a, a DM, you can go to your settings. So from the chat, you go to your settings and you rejoin as player, and it'll reload your game as if you were a player. And that way you can test and see to make sure things are hidden. So see, that goblin is no longer there for me as a player. So I'm gonna rejoin as GM, and we're good to go now. Um, and a tip, just that's gonna save you some time as well is build out, if you're gonna have multiple of the same uh, creature, just build one of them out all the way and then just copy paste that token, okay? So now that I'm on the GM layer, I switch to this little eyeball here, I can now move this goblin. And you can just use keyboard shortcuts too. I'm not gonna copy paste them yet. I'm gonna do all my work on this creature for now. So we have the token ready. Now let's make them a character sheet. It's sort of like a player character sheet, except it's going to be for monsters. So let's create a new folder in the journal tab. So you're going to click add folder, um, and I'm going to call it monsters. There, so my monsters. Now I'm going to add a character, um, and it's going to be called goblin ambusher. Sure. Make sure that it's not in the player's journal so they don't know that it's there. Um, after they've encountered a creature, you can by all means add it to all players if you wish. Um, and now I'm going to get the art from my desktop, just because I can. And this is from uh, Woods of the Coast, by the way. I'm going to select the token. I'm going to click it and then use selected token. So this is its default one. Okay, so now whenever we copy this person out, if we ever want another goblin ambusher, if we click and drag him out, we're going to have another one. But let's get this all sorted out first. So it's controlled and ended by uh, just me, not anybody else. And that's good for now. So we have their character sheet. So we're gonna make this, I think you make them an NPC. So I'm gonna do that. So there's all this stuff. So it makes it yeah, this stat block out for you already. Um, but the nice thing about uh, roll 20 is that they already have a lot of the um, stats and stuff. If you have the, um, if you have the core rule book and the monster manual. Um, with the standard rules, which is included for free, you can go to the compendium, and I'm going to type in goblin. I tested this out earlier, and so you can find hobgoblin, oh nice, hobgoblin and gar goblin part of the SRD. So what you could do is once you have the NPC sheet here, if you just click and drag the goblin here, it's going to fill it all out for you. You don't have to do any of the work. They've done it all for you. So now I have my goblin ambusher ready to go. Their AC, their health, their speed, everything is there. It's all nice and ready to go. And this little thing right here, Nimble Escape, is what makes them very, very strong at early levels because they can basically act like a rogue and hide as a bonus action on their turn and keep getting advantage. But that's... I don't recommend doing this, using this ability at level 1 because level 1 characters are very, very squishy. If you're fighting higher level characters, like say third or fourth level, and you want to challenge them with still goblins, 
utilize the nimble escape feature. So dis disengage, get in there, attack, disengage with them, or hide with them against your um, player character's passive perception, and you can make them quite effective. They'll be chipping away at their health, and they'll be quite annoying to deal with. So just remember this, but I don't recommend using it against first level characters because it is very strong. So um, you have your token filled out. You have your Goblin Amateur ready to go. That is great. So we're almost ready to fight. So I'm going to add a few more. And I'm going to do another little thing here just to make it easier in the middle of combat to track their health. So what you can do is, oh, here we go. So this, this token is going to represent uh, the Goblin Ambusher. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that the nameplate is not shown so that they can't really see it. And right here, this is bar one. If you go here, you can find all the different like statistics and um, values that are as part of a sheet. Um, you can also do this for player characters as well if you want to help track their HP. And I'm going to find HP, HP. Boom. So now it shows out of seven, and I'm going to make it full and save. Um, and as well, so it's hidden for now. If I put it on the token layer, what happens? Okay, it's hard to see just because it's green. So let's switch that. So I'm going to hide this once again. Back on the GM layer. I'm going to change the color of that just so it's easy to see. I can't. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is just going to make this none. I'm going to make the red their HP. Boom. Now there's a red bar for his health. Okay. So we have the health. I'm going to clear that one because we don't need it. I'm going to save that. Okay. So our monster is ready. Let's get a few more of them by clicking and dragging over. Oh, first I'm going to organize them to the monsters. And I'm going to click and drag. Let's say we have a party of four. So I'm going to have one, oops, one for each. Oh, this one doesn't have that HP set up yet. Well, I'm just going to copy this and control C, control V. So I'm going to have two there. So they're a party of four. Um, so I'm going to give them four foes to fight. Usually you, um, as just a general DM tip, in most combats, because of the action economy of fifth edition, where each character gets an action and movement and all that stuff, um, solo monsters tend to get destroyed by a party. Um, it's usually good rule of thumb to have either one strong monster and like a few like minions to help them instead of just by themselves, um, because otherwise they're going to get slaughtered. Um, and as for like monsters of their like challenge, I usually go like either equal to the party or equal plus one, depending on how difficult I want things to be. Equal like equal number plus two, things like that. I kind of go with that as my baseline, and then I kind of adjust it from there how I want it to go. I don't want this to be super intense. I just want it to be like about medium difficulty. Great. Now um, we have our ambushers ready. Let me just make sure they all have the correct stats and stuff. If I were to double click on one of them, how would I get there? Sheet up. I don't know. That's okay. No big deal. I believe they would all represent the same. Yeah. Oh, well. No biggie. Wait, we can figure that out later. There's a lot of automation you can do with Roll20. I don't even know all of it yet. Um, this is just enough to get you by um, in a fight, just to make things a bit smoother and not super clunky. So let's get our party here. So I'm going to get them from the start. Uh, where did they go? They're gone. Here we go. OK. So we have our, our ra fighter, ranger, wizard, and cleric. I'm going to go to the object layer, control V, control, control C, and then control V. OK, there we go. They're in their marching order. They are walking down the road. Cool. So here is one aspect. So let's say we're playing in the game. Um, and I'm going to give these guys their, make sure that everything is all good. I'm going to give them their bars as their HP, just so that I can show what it looks like. So if your tokens are associated properly with the characters, um, whenever you associate this with their character in the journal, so this is the cleric, 
this value of HP will automatically be associated. So we, if we check the cleric, their character sheet, they have 10 HP. Same with the ranger. I don't know why his is displayed differently. Might be because it's a bar style compact. There we go. But they're a bit harder to see. So let's go standard. You can also change um, these settings to be defaulted uh, in your game settings at the main menu, not in the game itself here, but like at the, when you go to invite players and things like that. Great, so there's our characters. They're getting ready to fight or they're, they're just walking down. So one of the goblins is gonna decide to attack one of them. But before they can attack, we're going to roll a, to see who is surprised and who is not surprised. So to do that, here's how we do um, combat step by step. So the first thing we do is we determine surprise. Um, if either if neither side tries to be stealthy, they automatically knows each other. So if if they're both walking to, through an open field and they both see each other, they are going to be not surprised. But if one of them is trying to hide, such as the goblins. Um, the DM compares the dexterity stealth of anyone hiding with the passive wisdom score of each character on the opposing side. That is why it's a good idea to be able to look at your player's sheets and at least get their passive perception off of them so that you don't have to ask. Because if you ask, it's going to be meta and obvious that, like if I say, oh, um, Ranger, what's your passive perception? It's obvious that I'm asking because I'm trying to beat it for some reason. So they're all already going to start thinking, oh, something's up, something's going on. So if you don't want to do that, you can just like in the meantime, doopy doopy doop check and write maybe write it down or keep note of it, or you can even put it in one of the bars above their sheet just to keep track. So the cleric is 13, passive perception. Uh, the wizard character, let's scroll. His is 11. The ranger is hopefully better because he is a ranger after all and he has perception. Let's see. Okay, so the ranger is 14. And this score is calculated by just taking the number 10 and you add the perception bonus of the character. So his is 4. So 10 plus 4 is 14. Okay. And the last but not least is the fighter, which I don't expect to have a very good one, but who knows? The fighters is 11. Okay. So let's see how stealthy our goblins are. Okay, so if I click on their sheets, let's see, what happens if I just click stealth? Will it roll it publicly or not? Okay, so it rolls it publicly. Now, how can I make it not? Ah, here we go. So if you don't want to roll your stuff publicly as a creature, for example, in this case, it would make sense to roll it secretly. Um, you need to go to the character sheet itself and select this gear um, and scroll down till you see whisper rolls to GM and make it, I would say whisper toggle. Um, and that way you can select up here whether you want it to be secret or not. So there, oops, I accidentally it. So now if I click stealth again, it'll just be to me, hopefully. Yeah, and that way, oh, and I don't want it to roll advantage every time either. So just like the other character sheets, um, make advantage toggle and make whisper toggle down here in the general options. And that way it won't always have a bunch of numbers. It'll just be nice and simple. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that. So now we have disadvantage, normal advantage, so secret stealth, let's just do one more. And I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna rename these two. And I'm just taking the name off so that they don't see it. I can see what goblin number that is, but they do not know. But I have it automatically set, so cool. All right, so they're walking. Let's see if they, the goblins are able to surprise the party before they shoot. So goblin one, I'm gonna roll stealth for them. 
17. Okay, they don't notice this goblin. Goblin number two. Roll for stealth. Nine. Okay, so they are going to detect this goblin over here. But let's just finish them off. Stealthed. And critical stealth. Okay, so they notice goblin two. So what happens with that? Let's check the rules. Um, any character or monster that doesn't notice a threat is surprised at the start of the encounter. If you're surprised, you can't move or take an action on the first turn of combat. You can't take a reaction until that turn ends. A member of the group can be surprised even if the other members are not. So, based on this, all three of the four goblins rolled higher than their passive perception. Therefore, um, everyone is surprised. So that means these these four are surprised, and this one is also um, surprised, technically. So that means that they will not get to act in the surprise round. So, given that, what does that mean for initiative? Okay, so just so now that we've determined who is surprised and who is not, if you want, you can even add a, a little check here. You can go, let's see. Oh no, I'm surprised. You can add a little icon just to represent that if you wish. And the players are also able to edit this themselves. Cool, all right, so now we shall roll initiative. So I'm gonna add an initiative tracker with this little clock here, boom. And now I'm gonna roll initiative for each of the players. So we have the cleric. So how you do this for a player, or if the player can do this themselves, is they click on their token and they click the initiative button, boop. So it rolled it, they got a eight and they get added onto the turn. Uh, let's do it for the wizard. Wizard opens their sheet, they click on their token and they click the initiative button. 18, nice. The ranger, so normally this would be a lot swifter uh, if the players were doing this themselves, it would just go bloop, bloop, bloop. But the main thing is that the player has to click their token when they do it. Otherwise it's gonna make everything all kerfuffled. So they click their token, they click their initiative. Now they're there. Um, so for DMs, you can roll all the creatures together. I usually do that because I'm lazy. I don't have any like a bunch of turns for them. So I'm just going to choose one of them and I'm going to add them onto the turn. By doing that, I'm going to right click them and click add turn. And see, because they're on the GM layer, even the characters can't see them there. Um, so I'm not going to add that one. I'm going to add the one that was surprised. So they see this one, they detect this creature. So I'm going to add them to the turn just so that that's, they're going to represent all the goblins and you can click them. Let's see if this works. Click the token and you click their, do they have an initiative? They do not. They don't. So I'm just going to click a dexterity roll and they got a nine. So I'm going to add them there. Now we have our order. However, uh, it is not in order. So what you do is you click this. And you click numerically sorted by descending. Boom. Now we have the top of the order, blah, 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 there. However, because they are, they are surprised, um, only none of these people get to act um, unless they want to speak or say something. However, these guys get to act firstly. So they are stealth against them. They are hidden. So they're going to take some shots. Um, not like alcoholic shots, but uh, they're with their bows. So Goblin 3 is going to make an attack against the fighter. So the wizard goes, he can't do anything, he can't move or act really. The ranger goes, so now the goblins are going to go here. So he, this guy's surprised, cannot act, uh, the other three can. So what you do is, I'm gonna make this public because I feel like it, and they're gonna have advantage because they are hidden from sight. When you, a creature is hidden, ally or party or monster, they get an advantage because they're an unseen attacker. So they're going to fire three shots at the fighter. They're going to try to bring down their biggest bruiser first. So they're going to roll short bow with advantage and I'm going to click that. So a 15 to hit the fighter 
and the fighter's armor class is 18, so it's a miss. And now once they've attacked, they become visible. So this guy attacked. I'm going to right-click, add to token. They are visible now because they attacked. Um, Goblin 4 is going to attack the fighter as well. The short bow, uh, natural 20. Oops. Oh, yeah, actually, I used the high one, natural 20. So now you roll the damage. Um, if you click the attack on here, it'll do that. And it'll automatically add that. So the fighter takes 10 damage. That's a huge hit against the fighter. And let's see if it automatically updates. So if I do this, it'll automatically adjust the fighter's health here. So now the fighter is at 2 health already. So this should be a difficult fight for the characters here. Level 1 is very tough. Now the last attack, um, seeing the fighter fall to his knees. So you can kind of, like, as a secret GM tip, if you do a big hit against a character and you don't really want to drop them down immediately, especially at level 1, you can say, okay, so the goblin sees that the fighter dropped to his knees from this big hit to his chest. So the other goblin is going to attack the ranger instead. Just to be realistic and also not too mean i mean you can be mean and just take the fighter out right away um but that's going to miss the ranger regardless so it's up to you how mean or nice you want to be i'm overly nice so i tend to do that okay so now the clerk doesn't get to go they've all acted uh the fighter doesn't get to go the wizard goes now so let's just do one spell with the wizard to see how it goes and then i think we're going to be done after that so, let's cast a spell. The wizard has some spells in his spell book. He has a uh, magic missile. Let's see, how many missiles do we get? We get three that we can see within 120 feet. And that ignores cover, which is big too. So the wizard's going to cast magic missile. If I can click it. And he's going to target goblin one, two, and three. The three closest ones. And he's going to click the spell. And you can check it off when it's used. Or I think this is for prepared. I don't recall. But anyway, let's see if I click that. All right, so five force damage to, I don't know, do you roll each time or do you roll it once? Each dart hits a creature. A dart deals 1d4. So magic missile is kind of a weird thing. Um, let's just say they all hit for five because that was a good roll. So each of them will take five damage. Oh, oopsie. So I made a mistake here, and because I associated the token uh, four separate times, and I copied that same one, their, all their health is joined up, but it shouldn't be. So I made that mistake. Um, so make sure when you are making the tokens, don't copy-paste them. Make each individual one a different creature. Because otherwise, because I copy-pasted them, uh, these all of these are behaving as if they're the same token or the same character. So you might have to make them generic. Um, and that way, let's see if I drop this one to one. Yeah, see, so these ones all got adjusted, this one did not. So sometimes you make, make mistakes, and that's fine. Mistakes happen, we're all human. Um, I mean, some of us might be elves or dwarves, but we're all humans. Um, and then for his other action, he is going to move. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, so that's that. Um, that is a whole basically a whole surprise round round of combat from here things would proceed uh let me just do a different attack on a character let's say the ranger's up next so he's going to act and he's going to target a goblin and fire off his longbow as a player you can just click longbow and there it is but right now it's with advantage we don't want that 11 is a miss and one last thing is that you can if you don't want to have your sheet popping up like this over and over you can double click it and it goes gray and you can hide it somewhere and then you can uh, bring it up when you need. Double click it, double click it away. That's for a player. Uh, so this was um, getting a combat ready for D&D 5e. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, contact me, I'm on Discord all the time. Um, or comment on wherever I link this video. So have a great day, and I hope your games go well.